All right, Harry Parker here. I got Terry Weatherford here, a longtime local Paris Valley skydiving cameraman and longtime friend. Thanks for being with us. How you doing there, Terry? Not too bad. How are you, Harry? Doing great, man. We this is our second day on um, 75 Ways P3 Camp. I figured I uh, appreciate you spending a little time with us. Um, these guys want to know how to learn how to fly camera. And one of the biggest questions I get is about equipment. So, Terry, could you just give us a quick rundown of how long you've been a professional skydiving cameraman and how you got to be one and some of the awards and stuff you've won? Well, I, I uh, started skydiving in, in 1998 uh, as a birthday gift from my sister. Uh, started doing camera. I've always been into cameras. I've had cameras since early high school. And I figured if, if some of the things I was seeing in free fall were... I mean, how can you not show that to somebody? It's just so phenomenal. And I just uh, just started doing it, did it for free, basically paid my own slot, uh, jumped with a bunch, found some crazies that would let me jump with them, take pictures of them. I uh, just kept doing it every weekend for three years. I paid, or two years, actually, I paid my own slot. Then had people come up, hey, can you do four-way? Yeah, yeah, sure. And it just snowballed from there. In 03, I started in on big ways, and uh, it's just been going like crazy ever since. I've uh, everything's evolved. I started with a uh, Pentex film camera, and now I'm shooting the, the Canon 7D uh, digital camera, which is uh, it's fast and it uh, the qual image quality is pretty remarkable. I'm using a Sony a CX100, which is full 1080p. It's a, it's a wonderful camera for as small as inexpensive as it is. What kind of lens you? Uh, I have a Raynox uh, 0.45. And what can you tell us about uh, lenses for those little cameras? Uh, get what you pay for? Or? Well, the lenses are, I mean, you, yeah, exactly. You get what you pay for. Uh, I've had many 49.95s. I've had a couple 29.95 ones. Uh, this particular one was on sale for $125, uh, but it's still a little low quality. I mean, the, 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 the better glass costs money. I mean, how well do you want to see? get rid of all the spots. This one has just very insignificant spots. Most people don't notice it, but they kind of get under my skin sometimes, and I have polished the shit out of this lens. <laughs> Excuse my language. No, you're good. And, um, but it's still good. It's better now, than Now, what most. kind of lens do you use on your uh, Canon 7D there? They, on the 7, I would use, it, it varies on what jumps we're wanting to do. Right now, I have a 20 millimeter f2.8. Um, it's pretty wide, but not I have a 15 also. I also have a 10 to 22. And you use mostly Canon glass? All, all Canon glass. And why is that? Uh, just their quality is really good. Uh, I have shot uh, Tokina lenses. Uh, a couple of those I really like because of the quality of the picture you get out of it. But I've, I've just stuck with Canon it just uh, just to stay. Now what kind, of, uh, what kind of helmet do you use? This is a Bonehead Flat Top Pro. I started with the Bat Rack which was a little different shape and when I changed to this it was like putting wings on my helmet the stability of being you know stopping the shaking was just phenomenal when I went with this helmet and uh, I'm glad I spent the money on it it's it's well worth it so do you, do, you, do you think that even for someone starting out that they should get something that's tight fitting on their head and gives them a stable platform is that like you want it where tight. You're going with that? this particular helmet uh, has heat you heat up the pads, put the helmet on, it shrinks to your head, specifically to your head. So and it's custom in a it's way. Sort of a custom fit. It uh, and custom fit liner. Exactly. Now we have found it at going up to altitude, uh, like sixteen thousand five hundred AGL. The foam expands, so the helmet gets tighter and tighter as you go up. Um, but it still it fits. It's comfortable. It, uh, it's what do you use for place. switch? You use a blow switch as well? I'm using a blow switch that you blow into. Some people use a tongue switch that they press with their tongue. I like the blow switch much better. Some people use the bite switch. Um, I've used both the tongue and the bite switch and have bitten through them after just a few hundred jumps. Uh, this blow switch has been in here since 05. <laughs> never had a failure with it at all. How about the ring side? Is that, a is that a necessity for the type of jumps you're doing? The ring side I use is a concentric. It has these little oil type marks in the center. And even if the helmet moves, those center marks stay with my eye. And as long as I'm looking through the center of those, it, it's, the camera's centered. 
Cameron's picture. It works well. And it, I mean, while being expensive, it's worth the money. And what, um, what's the most of the type of camera work you do here in Paris? Oh, uh, it's all formation skydiving. I, I uh, did some free flying early in my life, but haven't really had the chance to get back to it with, not with a camera. I've done some sit flying with this setup, but it's, uh, it buffets quite a bit being as it sticks out there so far. And what, um, what if, you, if you could just give one piece of advice for people who are starting out to really try and be a professional cameraman guy, what would you tell them? Get a bunch of jumps. Learn your equipment really well. Um, don't try to do too much too quick. Personally, stay away from GoPros, but I, you know, they're easy, they're quick. You just throw them on your helmet and go. Their qualities get gotten much better, but um, it's just, just jump. Jump like madman. How about learning your actually how to be a photographer? Learning your equipment. How what would you tell them to do with that? Uh, well, I had learned mine long before I started skydiving, and it just sort so of. So you're a, you're into a photographer that. who became a skydiver. Correct. And that's how Correct. that's how it worked for it you. It was a hobby. I wasn't a professional photographer or anything. I just uh, I'd been through several cameras before I actually started jumping and. and actually sold two of the cameras that I had in order to buy the gear <laughs> to begin skydiving and then bought stuff back. Newer. Big bar or steel. Absolutely. Sold well, the VCR to pay for those jumps. You well, know. we're on like a 10 minute call, so we're back up in the air and we got to get ready. We got to go. Thank you very much, Terry. You really bet. appreciate you taking the time. No problem. Talk to you soon. See ya.